This video is going to demonstrate how to do problem set number one, object number two. So let me zoom in to make sure I can see the dimensions I'm going to be replicating here. But if we take a look at this object, I can see that there is two half circles with longer sides, also known as a slot. And right off the bat, I can tell you, you can create this using lines and arcs and circles, or you can use the slot tool in two circles, and that would probably be the fastest way to do this. Uh, let's see, we have some dimensions here. We And one thing I want to point out now, actually, is we have three different extrusion thicknesses. We have the, the middle kind of thin plate part. We have this cylinder, which comes vertically up and this other one which goes vertically down and here's the sketch for what we're going to start with now i have what four dimensions i have tangents parallels um, a projection because of how we're using the um the origin the center point and that's really all you need now you will need a little bit more if you're using lines and arcs but if we use the slot tool it's going to be much quicker and that's what i'll be demonstrating so we have a fresh part here i'm going to go ahead and start a sketch and under rectangle i'm going to choose slot tool now i think center to center is going to be the easiest one it's also the first slot tool on the menu so i'm going to grab that now, the way the center to, the, to center slot works is I'm choosing the center point of the two half circles, and then I kind of drag to make it larger. Now, one thing I want to point out is the center point uh, or origin is in the middle of the slot. So I'm going to put one point on the left side, one point on the right side, and kind of go from here. Now, I can try and get that dimension for the... Um, half circles in now but i just prefer i find it much easier to come back later and put the dimensions in after i'm done drawing so that's exactly what i'm going to do now there are two circles one is coincident with the left arc one is coincident with the right arc now i can put these in anywhere i want and use a concentric tool or i can just make the center points of these circles coincident. It essentially accomplishes the same thing, uh, but you know, it's a couple less clicks. So I'm gonna do this. Uh, but you know what? I will demonstrate how to do the concentric as well. So the first one, I just click and put it on the green point and boom, that is uh, concentric and correct. I can also use the concentric constraint and say that these arcs and circles need to be concentric. That essentially accomplishes the same thing. But a few extra clicks and steps. All right, so I have this overall shape is about right. Now I need to put in my dimension. So I'm gonna start with the largest dimension first. So that is this point to this point or the kind of the top part of the slot. And that is uh, what is that? 8.5 inches. Now that's about 10 times bigger than the scale I'm currently working on. So when I put in 8.5, I probably won't even see it on my screen anymore. And this is one thing that kind of makes people uh, unsure if what they're doing is the right thing. But what happened is you just made it really big. So you have to zoom out. I prefer to zoom out with the roller on my mouse. I find it is the easiest and most natural thing to do, but I could use this panel to do uh, the same thing. There's orbit, zoom, pan. Um, this is probably a good time to let you know that with that rubber roller in the middle of your mouse, you can zoom in very easily. It actually zooms in wherever your mouse icon is. So uh, be aware that it, you kind of want it in the middle of what you want to zoom in on. The other thing is if I hold my roller down with this program, I can pan. I can also do that here with the hand, but I like to do things quick and easy. So I like the mouse personally. And the last thing I'm going to tell you is if you hold down shift and then you do the pan function, it orbits. So you can kind of three-dimensionally work around your universe. 
Uh, for me, again, this is the preferred way to do it. But when you're starting out, you have to figure out what works for you and what you prefer. All right, let's get the rest of these dimensions in here. So the circle on the right side has a diameter of 1.875. The circle on the left side has a diameter of 2.75 inches. And the arc on the left, which because of the way the slide is created, will also determine the arc on the right. That is 2.25 or two and a quarter inches. Now I do still have some purple here. I have two dimensions needed. so. I already know what's wrong, but if you don't, if you get to this point and you say, I don't know why it's purple, why do I still have dimensions? My best recommendation is to just grab and pick and pull and see what things move. You can also come down here and click the degrees of freedom and it'll show you what can move around. That looks a little goofy at first, but later on it gets a little easier to understand. But I like just the old fashioned grab it and what moves. If it moves and it's not supposed to move, then that's what you got to fix. Now, on the left side here, I briefly talked about it. The center point is right there in the slot. So I'm just gonna, I could do two things here. I can use the coincident and I could tell these two points to be at the same place. Or sometimes what will work is just to drag and drop. And it puts that coincident constraint in there. And now I'm fully constrained. So I am ready to extrude here. So let's move over to the 3D model tab. And in the toolbar here, you can see the 3D extrude. Now it zoomed in quite far, so let's zoom back out here. And I'm going to scroll over to the other side. Now, one thing to keep in mind is the, these are three different extrusions happening here. I can only do one depth or thickness of my extrusion at a time. So uh, I'm going to do this one first, and I'm actually going to go the opposite way because I'm trying to replicate what I see here. And what's my thickness? My thickness is 0.438, also known as 716. So 0.438, there is my thickness. Now, I could create another sketch and I could project these circles, but since I already made it in sketch one, I'm just going to use sketch one. So there's two ways which I can uh, use sketch one for additional extrusions. I can turn on visibility. It's like a toggle switch. Or I could click Share Sketch. Either of them works. Now I can click the Extrude button again. I can select this guy. And that is actually going to come up. So I'm going to come up this way 1.875 inches. But I will say this. If you pay attention to detail, this 1.875 actually uh, references the bottom edge of this flat piece. But if you flip this guy over you notice that it's not extruding flat with the rest of this. Um, if you catch that, that means you're a very detail-oriented person and it's an easy fix. So on the extrusion menu, I can go one way, the opposite way, both ways the same amount or both ways different amount. So if I click the asymmetric, now I can kind of play with these and figure out what goes where. So I know this way is distance B and that actually is the perfect thickness I, I could type that into and my thickness for distance a kind of stuck in there um, technically that would be minus distance b if you want to get really technical it does say from the bottom to the top so technically that is correct but if you were in my class i wouldn't dock you for that since you're a beginner all right so i have part of this done now I need to do the other circle, which we can see is flat with the top and extends down. So now when I extrude this one, because my sketch is on the top, I'm not gonna have to worry about any of that asymmetrical stuff. I'm just gonna go straight down uh, to the distance given, which is 2.478, also known as two and seven sixteenths of an inch. And make sure we're joining here. And there is my object. Now, if you did not set the current home view or you have it set a different way, um, you can go in my last video and see how to do that. But essentially, it's just get in the right position and click that button. Now, anytime you should be able to click the home button and get back to where you need to go. Now, the last thing to do before you save this and move on is make this sketch invisible. You never want 
all your information hanging out there when you're done with an object. You want to make sure you're in the home position. You want to make sure you're in the correct orientation and that all your information is hidden. This is how we want to be turning things in. This looks nice and professional. That is how you do object two of problem set number one.